The Big Ten's newest member, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, returned to action after finishing up their final exams for the fall semester. Head coach Doc Sadler has his team on a two-game win streak after an impressive road win at TCU just a week ago. Husker guard Bo Spencer has been playing lights out, reaching double figures in seven of his last eight starts. The senior transfer from LSU is also tied for second in the Big Ten with four 20-point games. Tonight, the Huskers near the end of their pre-conference schedule before the hometown crowd in Lincoln. It's Alcorn State and Nebraska, and it's coming up next. to NCAA men's basketball. We're in Lincoln, Nebraska at the Bob Devaney Sports Center as the Nebraska Cornhuskers from the Big Ten host the Alcorn State Braves from the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And hello again, everybody. I'm Larry Putney, along with former Husker Andy Markowski. Great to have you with us tonight at the Devaney Sports Center. It was an off week for Nebraska, at least on the hardwood. A lot going on in the classroom as Nebraska finishing up its finals. Doc Sadler gave the players a couple of days off to prepare for their finals. But back to the floor tonight against Alcorn State. And Andy, it's an Alcorn State club that comes in without its leading scorer. Marquise Baker broke his ankle. He's out. They now turn to Tuan Oakley for some production. Yeah, Marquise Baker, that was a huge loss for him. He was a leading scorer score returning this season. The same Marquise Baker had 32 points here in the game last year. So difficult loss, but Tuan Oakley gives him a chance. He's averaging 12 points a game, has scored 37 points their last two games, leading them in three-point shooting over 40%. So Nebraska will need to do a good job of paying attention to where he's at and not letting him have a big night. On the other bench, Nebraska Cornhuskers with a nice addition this year, and Bo Spencer, the transfer from LSU. He gives Nebraska something they haven't had in a while. Yeah, Bo Spencer sat out last year, and everybody heard of how good a player he was, and he's delivered. He's averaging 16.7 points a game, leading uh, Nebraska, but also top 10 in the Big Ten. Leading uh, the big Huskers in assists, also top 10, top 10 in minutes played. So he's a very talented guy, and, and really, when he goes, Nebraska goes. Nebraska trying to turn this into a tune up for the Big Ten Conference just two games away. Nebraska, Alcorn State coming up next.
welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. Crowd still arriving here for this non-conference game as Nebraska taking on Alcorn State. The Braves coming in with a two and seven record overall. The Huskers coming in at six and three. A look at the starting lineup for the Alcorn State Braves. Twan Oakley is at one of the guards. Kendrick McDonald the other. Jarvis Moore, Ian Francis, and Michael Starks round out the starting five for the Braves from Alcorn State. Here's a look at the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Bo Spencer will be at the guard. Brandon Richardson, Walker, McCray, and Ubel round out their five. Obvious by his absence is George Brian Diaz, who's been dealing with more foot issues. He will not be in the starting lineup tonight. In fact, will not play tonight, nor will he play later this week. He will miss two games for Nebraska and try to get him ready. Let's look at Doc. Sadler, the head coach of Nebraska, sixth season, 95 and 74. During his tenure at Nebraska, he's been a head coach for 13 years overall, 263 and 131. Alcorn State, led by Luther Riley. In his first season as the head coach of Alcorn State, one and seven for the Braves. So let's talk about the keys to this game, Andy. As you take a look at Alcorn State and Nebraska, each team has to do what well to win. Well, if you look at Alcorn State, obvious underdog. Three-point line is a great neutralizer. They're going to have to make some threes to be competitive tonight. Only one player averages double figures, so they need multiple guys in the double figure stat column for them to have a chance to pull off this upset. And the third thing, they've got to limit turnovers and give, them uh, give themselves a chance every possession down on offense. And for Nebraska. It's paint production. Without Diaz being in, they've got to find a way to get the ball on the block, score in the paint. They're going to see some zone tonight, Nebraska will, so they've got to make sure to attack, get the basketball in the paint, assist the turnover ratio. Still one-to-one -one on the year. I think they can get out of conversion, make sure we're taking care of the basketball. And the third thing, finals week is always a little different week. You did have rest with Monday and Tuesday off. However, mental fatigue and mental sharpness is always a challenge when you come back from an extended week of studying and making sure your finals are taken care of. So you Bell will tip it off against Starks and Nebraska controls. Huskers led offensively by Spencer, who's averaging nearly 17 a game, had 22 last time out against TCU. Nebraska's going to work the ball in their double high post offense against the man to man, trying to get it down on the block. U Bell with a turnaround down. First points of the game by Brandon U Bell for Nebraska. He's really come on this year with his offense. Always been a good defensive player, good rebounder, but he's finding ways. This is uh, three games already this season. He's in double figures. Up top is Jarvis Moore, the point guard, called for carrying the ball. Nebraska will get it on the turnover. And Coach Sadler, very good on-ball defenders are always going to be in the gap, ready to help dribble drive. The number one goal every possession is not let the basketball get dribbled into the paint. A good start by the Nebraska defense. Huskers, in addition to looking for some production inside, also would like to see their shooting percentage increase tonight. They've struggled in that area the last couple of games. Yeah, got off to a really good start shooting the three the first four games and, and have not been as consistent as of late. Being back at home, hopefully will help them get comfortable, get off to a quick start. Walker misses top of the key, gets the feed though from McCray down the middle and the lay-in by Walker. Nice job by Tony, keeping the ball alive. Walker recognized the seam down the lane, Tony delivered. 4-0 Nebraska on top early. You can see the help side, always in the gaps. Driving the lane and the foul called back on Caleb Walker. And this Walker. team has done a pretty good job, excuse me, Larry, of, of not fouling. They want to make sure they're able to, to contain a dribble drive, but yet keep teams out of the bonus, not giving them free opportunities late in the half from the free throw line. McDonald hits the jumper, and it's 4-2. And that's what you have to do against the Nebraska defense. You're not going to be able to get the ball all the way to the rim. So use one, two dribbles, pull up before the help side defender gets there. Nice shot. Good execution by Alcorn State. Up top to you, Bell. He'll take the three-pointer. Off the back. Still alive. Rebound to Walker. Goes back up. Gets his own board. Strong again and can't get it to go. I think he was expecting contact on that first one. Kind of lost the ball going up. Unfortunate for Nebraska, he wasn't able to finish. Off the hands of Walker and out, it will stay with the Braves. 
And you like Walker's activity. You've got an offensive rebound. He made a cut to the lane. Now he got a deflection. Those are the type of effort plays that you like to see early in the game that tells me that he's dialed in. Jarvis Moore now with it up top. Moore will drive in. Pump fake and from the ground puts it off the glass and the bucket by the point guard for the Braves, Jarvis Moore. It's four. See a little three court pressure here. Nebraska is going to have to keep a guy in the middle, try to get the ball to the middle and attack. Pretty easy job of breaking it by Richardson. Ball goes down low to McCray. Now back up top, Walker. McCray into U Bell. And on the errant pass, Starks comes up with the steal and then a foul called on Bo Spencer. Spencer's first of the game. And the second on Nebraska. Bo's very important just to stay on the floor. Obviously playing a lot of minutes, 32 minutes a game, picking up a quick one. Now he's got to be able to play intelligent, not pick up that second one where he's forced to go to the bench. Well, first opportunity here for Alcorn State to take a lead and on the jumper off by Kendrick McDonald, Nebraska will push it the other way. To Spencer with the jumper, off and the rebound, pulled down by Michael Starks. That time Spencer was able to get the ball out of his hands and Doc's trying to do that more, get him off the ball where he can screen and try to create some scoring opportunities for him without having to keep the ball in his hands the whole game. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get the 15-footer to drop. Goes off of Walker and out, it'll stay with the Braves. Alcorn State still looking for its first win against a Division I opponent. Both of the Braves' wins coming against NAI schools in their first game of the season. And last time out against Point University. Yeah, played Texas A&M on the road to 12. Uh, also lost to, uh, by a point to San Diego. So they've been competitive in a few games. Nebraska, I think, to, to open this thing up, I think to get out in conversion. I think we need to get some steals, try to get some easy baskets. Spencer left alone, can't get it. You bell underneath the turnaround, not there. That's pulled down by McCray. Nebraska will reset. Yeah, good job. That's already two or three offensive rebounds. Keeping possessions alive. Foul called on Tuan Oakley. Oakley's first and the first foul called against the Braves. Oakley will take a seat. And that's the advantage Nebraska has is obviously without Diaz, we're lacking uh, a 6 11 player, but we still have more size in Alcorn State where the more times the ball gets into the paint is going to be an advantage for us. Kadorian Sullivan now into the ball game for the Braves. Playing against the 2 3 here. Doc knew he'd play against some zone. Outside the drive by Richardson, put up and off the glass. Richardson gets it to go. Yeah, great play, great execution. They got the ball into the high post against the two-three zone, forced them to collapse. Instead of settling for the three, everybody wants to shoot threes against the zone. Richardson shot fake, created a seam for himself, and was able to get the ball to ten foot and hit a little bank shot. Nice execution by Nebraska. Richardson earlier this year had a terrific game on the road at USC and Nebraska's win in overtime. Of course, he's from LA. Nice to go back home for. Richardson and have that kind of production and we need him. He's uh, this team has not been consistent for an upper class uh, team. It's it's been disappointing. Richardson has been a little inconsistent. McCray's been a little inconsistent. Walker's been a little inconsistent. So if all those guys can get on the same page and, and it starts with Brandon being the two guard with the ball going through him, it can really help this team develop an identity as conference play starts. McCray down low off the nice speed from you Bell. And McCray with four. And already a good start. McCray's got a basket. Richardson's got a basket. Uh, Walker, a senior, has a basket. And that's what you expect out of your seniors. There's Sullivan up top. Nebraska with the ball pressure. Drive by McDonald. And the bucket. And that happens. <laughs> that, that's really good half court defense. And, you know, you forced Alcorn to take a tough shot, and, and the kid came through with the bank shot. So, four points early for Kendrick McDonald as well. 8 6 Nebraska, and the travel called by Caleb Walker. So, Huskers on top, 8 6. Timeout here at the Devaney Sports Center, Alcorn State, Nebraska.
along with Andy Markowski, I'm Larry Putney. Good to have you with us here tonight at the Nevada Sports Center, Alcorn State and Nebraska. Huskers on top by two, and a big rebounding advantage thus far, Andy, for the Huskers. Yeah, we're certainly uh, dominating the paint. We missed a couple easy shots, but we're being active on the backboard. We've got five uh, offensive rebounds. That's led to uh, four second chance points, really the difference in the game. I'd like to see Nebraska maybe pick the pressure up, which Doc is actually going to do here. Try to get the tempo a little faster. I think uh, us in conversion against Alcorn State is where we really have an advantage. So Richardson will pick up ball pressure. On Jarvis Moore, now off to Oakley. Twan Oakley, leading scorer in the lineup for this Brave squad, averaging 11.4 per game. Inside to Starks. A foul away from the ball called on Kadoran Sullivan. And Sullivan's first. So against this pressure, you, you can't be passive. You really want to attack it, get the ball in the middle. If teams want to pressure, you have to make them pay on the back end. Nebraska's a little passive against it. Now, now all of a sudden there's 24 seconds on the shot clock and you have yet to get an offense. And that's what Alcorn State wants. They want to slow the game down, try to keep it in the 50s and 60s and give themselves a chance to win. Now into the game is Josiah Moore, the 6'6 freshman for Nebraska. Yeah, just there's a look at Moore from Norcross, Georgia. It's an execution issue there. Just we're a little quick. Ubell had to move to, to try to get the screen, and that's the kind of the middle concentration of finals week. You look for those plays. That shouldn't happen. If you're crisp offensively, there should never be a moving screen. Another touch foul. That's already 14 fouls uh, for the Huskers. 13-22 to go in a half. Two point Nebraska advantage here. First half of play at the Devaney Sports Center. You can see Nebraska switching a lot of the perimeter screens. All their defensive players are interchangeable. McDonald trails the jumper. That's six for Kendrick McDonald. And he's earned those. Those are all been difficult shots. He's, he's had to pull up kind of the 15 foot. It, he's not real tall, so he knows if he takes it in the paint, he's at a real disadvantage to get a shot block. But pulling up. Hitting those 15 foot shots are difficult. I think if we stay with the defense, those shots will start missing, which we can convert off the defensive backboard. Off the hand of McCray, and it'll be a turnover. Alcorn State's ball. Yeah, another, another poor uh, entry pass. That's two passes where he tried to get the ball in in the low post and turn it over. You see, execution is uh, not where it needs to be on the offensive end. You saw the turnovers three on Nebraska, one on the Braves. Moore with the dribble. Sullivan looks inside. And a charge will be called against Oakland. And, and Brandon Richardson has always been a terrific defensive player. And it's, it's Doc's philosophy is man and a half. Doc, he's in the gap. He's ready to help. If Tim catches the ball and shoots it, that's okay in Doc's philosophy. But we're, they're not going to allow you to drive by and get the ball into the paint. Nice drive by the senior Richardson stepping in, taking the charge. Second foul early on Twan Oakley. Richardson with it up top for the Huskers. All even at eight. And you overlook an injury like Diaz. You know, without Diaz in the game, not only does that hurt you, but now more guys are playing at different spots of the rotation. You know, guys that maybe play at the eight-minute mark are now forced to go into the 12-minute mark. Units that maybe haven't played a lot of minutes together. You have two freshmen out there right now um, that you know, have not played a lot of minutes together. So all that comes into play when you have an injured player that sits out for one or two games. It affects your continuity and your rhythm as an offense. McCray now with five after the three-pointer. McDonald, another pull-up. That's off the rim. Rebound tipped around. Good hustle by Richardson to try to keep it alive, and it will go with Nebraska. So timeout on the floor, Nebraska and the Braves. It's the Huskers by three, 11-8.
back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. The Huskers on top of Alcorn State, 11-8 after the three-pointer from Tony McRae. Huskers with five points out of McRae. Here's a look at the Big Ten standings right now. Illinois 10 and one overall. Indiana at 10 and 0. And this is going to be a rough introduction into the Big Ten for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who are two games away from opening up. Big Ten play with Wisconsin. Yeah, it's the number one overall uh, RPI league. Right. Uh, six teams are rated, and the Big Ten kind of gift wrapped to start with the Wisconsin, Michigan State, at Ohio State. So I don't know if that was the Christmas gift Coach Sadler was asking for, but they, uh, it is what it is. It's a, it's a very good league. You got to play all the teams. So whether you play in the first three or the last three, you know, you still have to run through the 18-game gauntlet. And, and uh, the thing I'd like to see is, is us through these next two games get a little bit more. Uh, consistency get a little bit more crisp and, he, and you'd like to see him get healthy at some point which they haven't been all season of course the Big Ten won the ACC challenge with some very impressive wins from Big Ten teams in that challenge Nebraska not one of those to pick up a victory and that was a difficult loss you know I yep. the weight game they they just didn't play very well and still had chances to win it late unfortunately just couldn't make the one defensive stop to, to force overtime but it's a long season, and they're going to have plenty of opportunities to play big games in the Devaney Center. There, there you see your bell once again working at high posts in a 2-3 offense against a 2-3 zone on offense. And you can have a lot of good things happen to you when you can get a guy in the high post that can especially make a 15-foot shot. Five-point lead now by Nebraska, 13-8. Largest lead of the game for the Huskers. And you can see him in the gap. All the white shirts are in the paint. They're going to force them to make shots out or out for them to make shots over the top of the defense. Rattled around, ball still loose, and a foul underneath. It'll be called on Kadoran Sullivan, number 35, his second foul. And four team fouls now on Alcorn State, both Oakley and Sullivan with two apiece. Alcorn's going to stay with this full court pressure. Nebraska really hasn't been able to attack it. Alcorn will stay in it until Nebraska starts hurting them on the other end with easy baskets. Nebraska leading in rebounds 10-2, you see. The Huskers have been dominant offensively on the board as well. Here you see a 3-2 zone, kind of a matchup. Once again, look for Nebraska to exploit kind of the high post area. Nice skip pass. Off top, off the back of the rim, missed by Moore. Pushed the other way, here's McDonald with the jumper. And McDonald got it. He has eight now for the Braves. And now, as a scatter report, you have to change modes. You know, obviously, they, they talked about Oakley, Oakley, Oakley. Now McDonald's hurting him. And Nebraska has to do a better job of getting back, locating the one player that had eight points that's really kept Alcorn State in the basketball game. Spencer from the top is off. It'll go off of the knee of Alcorn State. Off the hand of Jamichael Hawkins and stay with Nebraska. Now into the game, Chris Neiman for Nebraska. And you can see what his own defense does to you. It kind of gets you passive. And now that's two consecutive three-point shots that we've missed. We've got to find a way. When we faced his own early in the in the uh, game, Richardson shot fake at the ball in the paint and got an easy basket. So I'd like to see us see if we can turn down that first three and get the ball inside. Fox from the baseline, Neiman with the rebound. Another rebound by Nebraska and called for the travel is Caleb Walker. Yeah, disappointing uh, break for Walker. I think he thought he got bumped and that's why he fell, but a nice job of staying active on the backboard, trying to give your team an, uh, an extra possession. Pressure by Walker on the ball. Xavier Rimmer now into the game for Alcorn State. Francis looks inside, off to Rimmer. And Nebraska won't help into the post. They don't want to give up three-point shots. We'll let Neiman guard it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, three, just off Neiman. Called for the push in the back. So Neiman a little shove before going up for the rebound. It'll be his first personal foul and fifth team foul on Nebraska. Yeah, I don't like the consistency there. I think Walker got bumped on the other end, which is a similar call, but you've got to adjust. 
And Neiman will get called once again. As Ian Francis goes hard right into Neiman, who maybe shuffled the feet just before contact. Well, yeah, nice, nice call. Neiman slid late, was about a half a step away from getting position, and you know, being 265 pounds, when he bumps you, you're going to go flying, and the referee certainly saw that and rewarded Alcorn State. Back in for Nebraska comes Brandon Richardson. Zaya Moore will take a seat. And Ian Francis, second one is off. Rebound to Walker. So 13-11, Nebraska after leading by five. Back to within two are the Braves. Alcorn State's back in the 2-3 matchup. Nebraska's trying to work the ball, find a seam up top to see if they can penetrate it to break the zone down. Fox up top trying to provide the screen for Spencer. Now Fox, let's get pass over to Richardson for three, is off. Rebound underneath to Starks. Got three over three right now against the 2-3 zone from the three-point line. Alcorn State will stay in that just it's been the most effective defense they've had with uh, 12 minutes already gone in this first half. Nebraska, as you said, one for five from three-point range, really struggled from three-point range last year. Outside, Hawkins got the three up by one. Braves take the lead. And sometimes basketball is that simple. It won, you know, we've missed three threes, open threes, and Alcorn State just made. It's, it sometimes comes down to just stepping up and making a shot. Hawkins with his first three of the game, and Alcorn State with its first lead at 14-13. 7.20 to go here in the first half. Kick outside, Spencer will drive. Gets his own rebound and tied up underneath. And Starks ties up Spencer. And Alcorn State, the Braves coming into Lincoln. They've got the advantage, 14-13. Sports Center in Lincoln. Students are away, but others have made their way in here for tonight. Alcorn State on top, 14-13. One of the things that Doc Sadler said he really wanted to see improvement of that he's been a bit disappointed with over the last couple of days is the defensive effort. Is he is he pleased to this point in the game? They've done a, a decent job. Um, they've been some. Uh, Alcorn has made some tough shots. Uh, you know, I, I think. 
offense affects defense right now and we're struggling offensively we're six of 19 we've uh, turned over five times I would like to see us be a little bit more aggressive and see if we can't get out get the crowd into it maybe get a dunk in transition so our defense has been solid uh, Alcorn State has made some tough mid-range shots to, to kind of be uh, you know with a one-point lead the final now into the game for Alcorn State up top with it is Hawkins kicks it back to Defano. And you can see already on this possession, we're a lot more active out of the timeout. Now, Just before the shot clock, they got it off, but no good. Rebound to Walker. So good defensive effort there. And I'd like to see us try to get a quicker outlet and try to get in the offense a little quicker, but great defensive possession. Strong to the basket goes Walker. Couldn't get it to go, but draws the foul on Tofano. Tofano's first. And Walker will go and shoot two. Nice job by Nebraska there to, to get it down on the baseline against the zone. Now we've missed some threes, so I guarantee you, Coach uh, Sadler at the timeout was saying, get the ball inside, get to the free throw line, which they were able to do that possession. Walker hits the first. There's a look at Doc Sadler in his sixth season at Nebraska. And this is a, a good offensive lineup for Nebraska. They've got you have guards that can score against the zone. You have McCray now as your four. You have Ubel that can step out and make threes. Look for a little spurt ability here from Nebraska to see if we can't stretch this lead to, you know, try to grow six to eight, ten by the halftime. All even at 14 now. There's a look at the field goal percentage. Alcorn State shooting 46%. Nebraska at just 32. Foul called on Spencer as he went for the steal. And that is seven personals. They'll be in the bonus. Yeah, just a half step slow. Had, you know, decent idea. Unfortunately, it ends up being a bad play. You commit your second foul, and Alcorn State is now in the bonus. And the one one misses the front end. Six minutes to go, first half. All even at 14. Alcorn State and Nebraska driving hard, but not getting a shot as Walker. Ubell tied up underneath. And they'll call the foul on Ian Francis. Francis, his first personal foul. And Nebraska went to the same set with Walker, kind of running short corner to short corner, was able to get the basketball and unable to finish, but Ubell was active on the the backboard that's the ninth offensive rebound for the Huskers really been the uh, reason why we've been competitive so far. Walker. The corner Spencer with the three is off. Ball tipped around underneath off the hand of Michael Starks and out it will stay with the Huskers. Really good activity again on the offensive backboard we just can't or uh, Nebraska can't get a shot to fall. See McCray working this high post of the zone defense. Spencer now with it. Off to Richardson. Spencer with the three on the way and rattles out. Nebraska just can't get one to fall from outside. So you have to look for other ways to score. I mean, driving, trying to get the ball on the block. Certainly having Diaz not available hurts the Nebraska because he's the best low post score they have. If they throw it down to Diaz, they have to help. Then he can kick out and maybe get a better shot. He's not here, so you've got to find other solutions offensively. George Bryan Diaz, if you hadn't heard, sitting out this game and likely the next game as well with some foot issues that have really crept back up in the last couple of weeks. He's considering going back to see this foot specialist in, at Duke University that he visited within the offseason underneath charge called on McCray. A pretty good execution. Once again, I think Doc has, has found a solution to the zone, kind of getting a guy in the short corner. That time we got it. Uh, McCray was able to slide and credit Alcorn State sliding in, taking the charge, erasing the basket from Nebraska. Braves now with the ball and a two point lead. Foul will be called on Walker. 
Got a hand on Jamichael Hawkins. Still in the bonus, so Hawkins will step to the line and shoot two. Sixteen fourteen here with four and a half left. First one from Jamichael Hawkins off the back. They've missed both of their one and one opportunities in the bonus. In the whole game, Nebraska has played against a set Alcorn defense. When I say that, at no point have we had a two on one advantage or a three on two advantage. It's been five against five, and that's hard to do when you're missing shots. Maybe your confidence is lacking. McCray from outside, and McCray ends that drop from three point range. Nebraska now two of eight from outside the arc in the first. They make it second three-pointer now by McCray. And Tony can, can do that for you. He's very gifted offensively, can step out 18 to 22 feet, can score in the paint. A 30-second timeout called by Alcorn State. Nebraska regains the lead at 17-16 with just under four minutes to go here before half. You now we talked with Doc Sadler yesterday about the new addition to the starting lineup and his outstanding score, Bo Spencer. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously three years of experience at the, uh, in, in the SEC helps. But, uh, you know, he has a confidence about him. And, uh, you know, he's not afraid of taking a big shot. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, that could also be a negative because I think uh, there's times that maybe we could get an easier shot. And that's something that we're working on with him to cut down the number of turnovers. I think that's one of the things that you take a look at the last two games that Bo Spencer maybe has struggled with is his turnovers six and seven in the last two games. He's had 13 turnovers his assist to turnover turnover ratio in those two games eight assists to those 13 turnovers. And a lot of times that tells you as a coach he's trying too hard trying to make too many plays not letting the game come to him. Just hope he's kind of settles in as the team becomes more consistent. Three pointer is off. Rebound goes long. Pulled down by McDonald. Rivers with the steal and the foul will be called on Jamichael Hawkins. Nice hustle by David Rivers. Yeah, that's the, what Nebraska needs to do. They need to get some deflections. We almost had an opportunity to create a two on one opportunity there. So Rivers comes up with the steal. He'll be at the line when we come back. Nebraska on top by one, thanks to the three by Tony McCray. One point Nebraska advantage along with Andy Markowski. I'm Larry Putney. Welcome back to the Devaney Sports Center. Hey, I want to remind you coming up at halftime, 
We're going to take a look at Nebraska's new addition to their athletic program, the new Hendricks Training Complex, just adjacent to the Devaney Sports Center, actually attached to it. Plus, we'll have the first half highlights and stats. It's all coming up at the half. And if you haven't had an opportunity to see video or even be inside this new training complex, it is a remarkable new facility for Nebraska basketball, wrestling, volleyball. So many things eventually will be housed at this new training complex. It's certainly a terrific recruiting tool for the Huskers. Rivers hits the first of the one and one. That's where you like to see Rivers and Moore aren't going to play a lot as freshmen in terms of minutes, maybe 10, 12, 15. But when you get in there, you have to take advantage of those opportunities, and making free throws are a part of that. So now Rivers on the ball. Jarvis Moore will drive by Rivers, dishes it back up top. Ball loose, pulled in by Kendrick McDonald. And Nebraska's kind of extending their defense out a little bit more. See maybe if a deflection can lead to a run out and a layup. Double team, ball swatted away by Richardson. Into the hand of Alcorn. State of the shot by McDonald. Ten points for Kendrick McDonald in the first half. It's just an unfortunate bounce from Nebraska. Created a loose ball opportunity, just kind of bounced right to Alcorn State, and McDonald has made four ten, uh, to 15 footers this game and felt comfortable making that one. Richardson now with it for Nebraska. Two and a half to go before half. Off to Rivers, looks inside to McCray. McCray, baseline, pull up. Good shot right before the shot clock went off by Tony McCray. Yeah, good shot, uh, shot fake and footwork by Tony. Got the defender up off the floor, one dribble. So far, Tony's been the uh, bright spot already uh, to 10 points with two minutes to go in the first half. Cray averaging eight points a game, already surpassed his average. Knox said he's one of those guys he wanted to get some more minutes to this year, and in the last two games, he's averaged 25-plus, has McCray. He's seen much more time in the last few outings. Yeah, and, and over the five-game span, has averaged 11 points, so seems to be off, uh, you know, had foot surgery this summer, which I think maybe affected him in the fall with conditioning and, and repetitions, and it seems to be a little bit more comfortable and, and certainly a capable scorer and, and a kid that Nebraska is going to need 10 to 15 points for with, with the injuries to Diaz. Cray with a season-high 15 against Creighton earlier this year. Oscar's now back up by three with the ball. And the real advantage Tony has at, at 6'7", he's undersized playing the four, but he can step out and make threes. And a lot of times the opponent's big guys aren't real comfortable locating him and chasing him around the perimeter. Not only can he create an opportunity for himself, but sometimes he gets double teams and creates a shot for a teammate. Last few times down the floor, Alcorn State has done a better job on their defensive boards. Nebraska with 10 offensive rebounds here in this first half. Kick outside, Hawkins three is off. Rebound by Richardson and he'll push the ball. Rivers inside to McCray, left hand. McCray can't get it to go, but a foul underneath on the rebound by Ubell. And that will be called on Hawkins, Jermichael Hawkins. And that's how you attack a zone. You never let the get zone get set. Nebraska pushed the basketball up, got the ball to the baseline before Alcorn State got their defenders in position. McCray missed an easy one, but Bell was on the weak side to get the rebound and get a foul. As a team, Nebraska shooting 76% from the free throw line. So a terrific number for the Huskers. Yeah, the only negative thing is they're not getting there enough. Yeah. You know, that's, you always want to shoot more free throws in your, or excuse me, make more free throws than your opponent shoots. And Nebraska actually has shot less attempts than their opponent. So Doc is trying to explore different ways to, to get to the foul line. And part of that number is we play man to man, and we have seen a lot of zone so far in the non-conference, which I think has made us passive and then more of a jump shooting team than a driving team. So Nebraska back up by five, 35 seconds to go. McDonald drove baseline, kicks it back up top, shot on the way by Rimmer. He got it. Three-pointer by Xavier Rimmer. 
And that was one of my keys early in the game, or excuse me, my, my pregame keys for Alcorn to be competitive. I thought they needed to make their open threes. And, and every time we've got it to four or five, they've made that three point shot to stay in the basketball game. Two for six from three point range is Alcorn State. That cuts it back to a two point lead. Doc Sadler will take a timeout and draw something up here in this last 25.5. Yeah, what Coach Sadler is talking to him about is shot clock is up. So the worst case scenario, you go into halftime up to. The, the, the worst thing you can do is take a shot to give Alcorn State the basketball to, to try to get a shot up at the buzzer. So when you're playing half-court offense with 25 seconds to go and the shot clock's off, you want to try to take that shot attempt about four or five seconds because you do want to give yourself the opportunity to get on the offensive backboard and maybe grab a missed shot and lay it back in before that halftime buzzer goes up. So that three-pointer by Alcorn State stopped a 9-2 Nebraska run. We saw Nebraska grow the lead to five. It's now back to two at 23-21. So going against the 2-3 zone, Nebraska has had some success getting the ball to the short corner of the baseline. Richardson held till 10, and now they'll run the offense. Rivers to Richardson, back to Rivers. And Nebraska gets an off-balance shot off, not the shot they wanted, but they'll head to halftime with the lead. So Nebraska on top at half. Doc Sadler's club 23-21 on top of Alcorn State. We'll be back at the Vanny Sports Center. The steps for building Nebraska basketball into a dominant force are underway with the inclusion Well, we're at halftime at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, Alcorn State and Nebraska. The Huskers with a two-point advantage at the break, 23-21. We mentioned it earlier, but there is this phenomenal, new, amazing addition to the Nebraska Athletic Department. It's located adjacent to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Let's take a look. The steps for building Nebraska basketball into a dominant force are underway with the inclusion of the Hendricks Training Complex. The $18.7 million construction boasts what many consider to be the best practice facility in the country. We knew we were uh, uh, down a little bit low in, in terms of a practice facility in relation when we were in the Big 12. We realized that. And so uh, this is really a commitment to, to show that uh, we care about basketball and that uh, it means a lot here to the University of Nebraska, and it's, it's, it's been a big difference. Well, this was uh, Tom Osborne's vision 
When he first became athletic director is he felt that we needed to do something different for men's and women's basketball to kickstart them and to help them go to the next level. The athletic department took several visits to newly constructed basketball facilities at Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and others before constructing their own vision of the perfect training facility. First and foremost is that we wanted uh, two practice courts that we could teach in uh, with Doc and Connie, um, and that was first and foremost. It's soundproof for a teaching environment. We did a quart and a half. Most training facilities that when you go around the country to see, you have just a court itself. So this adds to that player development, which we really wanted, and a teaching tool, uh, which was vitally important. And while practice facilities were first on their mind, they also didn't shy away from giving student athletes something to say wow about. We wanted that extra touch. All the little gadgets that go into it, you know, the televisions. We have 63 televisions in this complex. We have a juice bar. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, you know, as you go down the lobby, balls that light up. You know, it's all those little touches that when a recruit comes through this facility, it shows the commitment of basketball here at this university. Wow. Um, you know, it was really nice. We've seen, uh, we, we've seen bits and pieces of it as it was in the making, but when we finally seen everything, uh, everything light up and, you know, all the gadgets working and, and the TVs and everything like that, it was definitely impressive. Nebraska's commitment to basketball through the Hendricks Training Complex will also be strengthened by the new Pinnacle Bank Arena, signaling a true change of how basketball is viewed in the state. Well, right now, with the addition of the Hendricks Training Complex and the new uh, Pinnacle Bank Arena here in Lincoln, is that we feel right now with that one-two punch is that uh, we're going to be a dominant force here in the future. And it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, and this is the first step of that big giant puzzle that uh, we'll be putting together. But uh, with the Hendricks Training Complex, it gives us an advantage on the recruiting. And then two years later, here comes the new arena. So uh, we feel we have the best one-two punch in America. Well, certainly big facilities and big dreams for Nebraska basketball. We're at halftime. We'll be back to take a look at some highlights and stats coming your way.
Welcome back to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. 23-21, Nebraska on top of Alcorn State at the break. Along with Andy Markowski, I'm Larry Putney. Good to have you with us. It was a bit of a disjointed first half by Nebraska. Yeah, just not a lot of tempo. You look, we're only forcing one steal. Alcorn State turns over 16 times. Normally, we've only forced five turnovers. We're shooting 30% from the floor. The only positive, we have 11 offensive rebounds, but when you miss 18 shots, right. you're going to have a lot of opportunity to get rebounds. So I look for Coach Sadler to try to increase the tempo somehow, but give Alcorn State credit. They've executed, they haven't turned it over, and they've made shots to try to keep it close. Let's take a look at the halftime uh, highlights from the first half. Kendrick McDonald really on fire early on. He had 10 points in the first half and kind of got some pretty tough shots off and in. Yeah, he's undersized, so he knows he's got to pull up, and that's exactly what he did. He had 10 pull up jump shots here in conversion. Nebraska does and locate and was able to, to, to knock that in. The focus was Twan Oakley. Twan Oakley had zero points. So Alcorn State's been able to be competitive without their leading scorer. And once again, they had two threes in the first half. And both times, Nebraska was up four and five. And they used that three point line to get back into the uh, game. Brandon Uvell early led Nebraska. Yeah, nice job not only getting a low post touch, but an elbow jump shot against the 2-3 zone. Richardson penetrates against the 2-3 zone. We have not been a good shooting team against the zone. We've had more success being able to get the basketball in than McCray. And, and really, Tony McCray's been the one bright spot offensively with 10 points and, and has made our only two three-point shots. Those 10 points from McCray led Nebraska to a two-point advantage. They lead at the half, 23-21 in Lincoln. Back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center, Huskers on top of Alcorn State 23-21. Fans on hand enjoying themselves and enjoying that Nebraska lead. Take a look at stats, and there are some that they would enjoy here, others not so much. Yeah, Alcorn State shooting 50% from the field. That's just too high uh, for Coach Sadler, Coach Defense. Yep. Nine of 18, two of threes. Uh, we haven't fouled. They had five uh, fouls early on, and then we didn't get, get them to the foul line that often, which was good. Ten rebounds, only two offensive and five turnovers for Nebraska. Just need to improve efficiency offensively. Eight of 26, two of eight from the three-point line, only get to the foul line six times, making five of those. One bright spot was rebounding, 21-11, yep. which was offensive. And, you know, the six turnovers is, is manageable, but we only have five assists, so we're not playing at a fast enough level offensively to, to try to create some opportunities and open this lead up. All those numbers mean one thing. Nebraska leads it by two at the half. Good crowd on hand. We'll be back in Lincoln.
Just moments away from second half action. Nebraska leading Alcorn State 23-21. Along with Andy Markowski, I'm Larry Putton. Glad that you could join us as Nebraska has now wrapped up finals week. They've turned their attention back to the hardwood and seems like they may be still suffering from some post-test blues. Yeah, just the tempo is yeah. just not there. It just seems like every possession is a grind for Nebraska. Credit Alcorn State for not turning it over, getting back, kind of making this play against a set defense or making Nebraska play against a set defense. Bo Spencer leading score zero points. There are just a lot of things that went wrong for Nebraska in the first half and, and you have to start the game with the with an energy and an urgency and, and that wasn't there. Hopefully the second half is different. Over and back called right away. On the inbound pass from.